All right, welcome to the shows of Reading, Writing, Arithmetic. I'm Pamela Stone, and this week we have Dade uh, Elementary School, and we're very excited. We have some oratorical contests, uh, uh, um, contestants, they're here today. And so we're going to let them introduce themselves, and then they're going to do their speech for us today. We're, we're super excited. All right, so welcome, guys. Hello, I'm Jersey Crabtree. I'm in Miss Rose's fourth grade class. I'm, oh. And what grade are you in? Fourth grade. Okay. I'm Allison Jenkins in Miss Rose's fourth grade class. I'm Cohen Blevins from Miss Rose's fourth grade class. All right. And I'm Pamela Stone from, you know, who knows how many years I've been doing this. So. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, so we're going to start with Jersey, and she's going to read us your speech. So go ahead. What the world gains from optimism. If you're wondering what optimistic, optimistic means, you came to the right person. Optimistic means that you're hopeful and confident, and confident about the future. I know that sometimes we're not all perfect, but optimistic means that you can change even if you're in a bad situation to be a pessimist or an optimistic person. What would you choose? I know I would choose to be optimistic. Would you? We need to be optimistic every day and you can change how people act. I like being optimistic because I can have more friends because no one wants a friend that's always pessimistic. Some things the world gets from optimism is that now there's more optimistic people than there used to be. And and you want to know if, no, because it started because optimistic spreaded and then optimism. I want to thank two young women because of the gratitude and optimism they spread they gave us. One of them is Tanina Bice. I want to thank her for starting the bucket fillers at our school because it helped me so much. She helped me because she wants us all to be optimistic. The other young woman is Susan Rose because the whole year when I wanted to give up because I think I can't do it, she helps me and, and tells me I'm to never give up and I can keep and keep trying and I do. Did you know that I play basketball? Well, sometimes I want to give up, but my coach and my tell me teammates tell me to keep trying so I do see do you see how um now much optimistic spreads and helps using helps use y use us in life being optimistic is the right thing to do if you ever if have you ever thought about it what it would be like if everyone in the world was pessimistic well let me tell you something all I know is that I wouldn't want it, that to happen because it would be it wouldn't be so good also, have you ever thought about it, about everyone being in the whole world being optimistic? Well, I have, and sometimes I wish that, I wish that that was us, because everyone was nice, and no one was mean. Do you want to know something that, the, something else? Well, that will be our world soon, if we keep being optimistic. Here's a quote from Dr. Seuss that really stands out to me. Why fit in when you were born to stand out? Also another is, don't give up. We believe in you all. A person's a person, no matter how small. I like this poem because it tells us that no one's perfect and everyone's different. That's why I picked these two quotes. Some people, some people that were optimistic were Eleanor Roosevelt, Rosa Parks, and Frederick Douglass. Eleanor Roosevelt was optimistic because even though her husband was paralyzed because of his, because of the polio, polio she, she still was optimistic about it and help, helped him. Rosa Parks was optimistic because even though, even, those, even though those seats were for whites only, she still was optimistic about it, even when they were being hateful and she had to pay the $100 fine. Frederick Douglass was a true hero to others, other slaves because he found a way out so he could end slavery and have freedom. Now we should be like Frederick Douglass, Rosa Parks, and Eleanor Roosevelt, Susan Rose, and Tanina Bice, and be optimistic and change the world. I know we can do this. If I can do it and, they, and these young people can do it, then anyone can do it. Even if you don't even want to try, you should try. We have freedom and liberty, liberty, so we can do anything to get everyone to be optimistic. We should be thankful that we have people just like these people so that are so optimistic that they changed how we are today. Thank you.
Very good, Josie. I really like that. So did all of you write about being optimist? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, just for the viewers out there, because it's called a, it's an oratorical speech, and did you have to, they chose the topic for you? Yes, ma'am. Yeah? Okay, good. All right, well, that was really good, and that was Jersey Crabtree. She's in fourth grade, and whose class are you in? Miss Rose's class. Mrs. Rose, Miss Rose's class. Very good. All right, thank you. All right, go ahead. Well, listen now, introduce yourself. My name is Allison Jenkins from Miss Rose's fourth grade class. Okay. What the world gains from optimism. I'm Allison. Today I have a question for you. Did you ever wonder what the world gains from optimism? Optimism is looking on the bright side of something. If someone is optimistic, they are positive and looking on the bright side. An example of optimism is if you, if you are having a bad day, make the most out of it. I have a few optimism quotes in my opinion of what they mean. This quote says, believe and you're halfway there. What I think that means is if you believe you can do anything you set your mind to. The next quote says, no matter how cold the winter, spring is sure to follow. I think this means no matter how bad your day is, there is a good thing coming. The last quote says, in optimism there is magic, in pessimism there is nothing. I think that means if you are optimistic, there is always a way. But if you are pessimistic, it is harder to look on the bright side. Choose optimism, not pessimism. I have confidence. I believe in myself. I believe in others. I look on the bright side. I work hard and have fun. Do you do the same? If you do, you and I are optimistic and absolutely not pessimistic. We have good days because we're optimistic. When I was in second grade, I wasn't having the best year. But every day, my poppy would always ask me what the beauty spot of my day was. That is what made me optimistic. He said there is a beauty spot and every day you just have to look for it. Even if it's three o'clock when you get out of school. So I started looking for the beauty spot. That is what lifted me to be optimistic. In my opinion, he, was very, he is very wise and optimistic. So if you know someone that is pessimistic, lift them to be optimistic. So optimistic people can always lift pessimistic people upward to be the best they can. If we all were optimistic, the world would be much better than mixed or even all pessimistic. That is why we want to lift every pessimistic person in the world to be optimistic. Another good quote of optimism says, when it rains, look for rainbows. When it's dark, look for stars. I think that means, in hard times, look on the bright side of it. If you, have, if you believe that optimism changes the world like I believe, you are optimistic. You will also believe, like I do, that the best is yet to come to you. If we are always optimistic, there are not many dull moments. Optimistic people stand strong. We believe in others because they believe in us. We can all lift each other up, and so all of us are optimistic, and that makes the world the best place to live. I hope after hearing this speech, you yourself will choose to be optimistic. Thank you for your time and attention for listening to what I have to say about what the world gains from optimism. Very good. And again, that was Allison uh, Jenkins, and she's in fourth grade, and you're also in Miss Rose's class, right? Yes, that was very good. Uh, I think you're probably smart. Thank you. <laughs> I was, I've never heard that. That was really touching. All right, so introduce yourself. I'm Cohen Blevins from Miss Rose's fourth grade class. Okay, and you're going to read yours, so yes, go for it. Are you optimistic? Let's begin with, what is optimism? Optimism is having the confidence of the future or a successful outcome of something. For example, is the glass half full or half empty? What do you do when life gives you lemons? Do you make lemonade or does life leave a sour taste in your mouth? We all want a bright future for our generation, so how can we get there? I believe the world gains three important benefits from optimism, health, hope, and helping hands. First, the world gains help from optimism. For example, when you go to the doctor to get a flu shot, you're probably scared. If you think it's going to be painful, it will be. But if you are optimistic, you realize it's not that bad, and later on, you're glad you did it. Because you are optimistic, you aren't sick, and you can play with your family and friends. You can do more fun things with your family, like sledding, going to football games, and going to see Christmas lights. 
I also think when you are healthy, you work more efficiently. For example, when you work more efficiently, you have the opportunity to get a promotion or raise, and that makes your life and your family's life better. Also, the world gains hope from optimism. The definition of hope is wanting something to happen or be the case. When you hope for something, you gain the courage to try something new or keep going. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 12, let your hope keep you joyful, be patient in your troubles, and pray at all times. This can help you accomplish lots of goals. You may earn first place in a competition, win a race, or even write a book. You must have hope to succeed. And without optimism, you aren't hopeful. Remember, you can do anything you put your mind to. Lastly, the world gains helping hands from optimism. Optimistic people often help others. A helpful person is someone who provides assistance or offers useful information. Our teacher, Miss Rose, is an example of helpfulness. She always answers our question with a smile. She helps cheer us up when we are sad or lonely, and she helps us learn. This year, I have improved my reading because Miss Rose encouraged me. She said things like, good job, keep going, you can do it. I keep a vlog in my reading minutes at home and choose books I like to read. This has helped me get a higher score on my spelling and vocabulary tests. Another helpful person who shows optimism in her everyday life is Ellen DeGeneres. Although she shares her wealth by giving people money, cars, and even jobs, she is most helpful by sharing her optimistic attitude. She is helpful to those around her regardless of their status. She wants the world to be a better place. Her motto is, be kind to one another. She is a great role model for kids. The last example is Margaret Brown, who was aboard the famous ship Titanic. She refused to get in a lifeboat when the ship began to sink because she wanted to help people get to safety. She was optimistic in her efforts to help as many people as possible. In the end, the crew made her get in a lifeboat because of her social status as a first class passenger. After she died, she was given the title, The Unsinkable Molly Brown. She was given this title because she never gave up and wanted to help as many people as possible. What a lesson we can all learn from her optimistic attitude. In closing, I believe the world gains help, hope, and helpfulness when we choose optimism. We can be happier, healthier, and help one another if we choose. Next time you see someone left out, a job that needs done, or you want to try a new skill or hobby, remember to first be optimistic. It starts with you. You can change the world for the better. Who knows? You could be the next Ellen, Miss Rose, or Margaret Brown and make the world a happier place. A place of hope and optimism. That's where I want to be. All right, so you've heard from all three of them. I don't know about you, but as a middle school teacher and I've been a high school teacher, those are amazing. They're super, super intelligent for kids your age. Very good job, guys. I'm very proud of you all. So, all right. Um, thank you for being on. You guys did really, really well. So, you want to tell them goodbye? We're going to take a, we'll take a commercial break and we'll be right back on Reading Rhyme with Patek. Bye. Bye. When you need a licensed plumber, call Stacy Ledwell and the staff at Mr. Rooter in Scottsboro. Mr. Rooter provides your home or business with advanced solutions using high-tech equipment. Our commitment to customer satisfaction shines through in our personalized service. When you schedule an appointment, our professionals will dedicate time to explain the work that has to be done. Our staff will give you upfront pricing, so you'll know exactly what's involved before any work begins. We even pump septic tanks and do new construction on houses. Fully licensed, bonded, and insured, Mr. Rooter in Scottsboro. Call Stacy Ledwell today to set up an appointment at 256 Five seven four forty seven ten. Coming to the Colonnade Theater in Ringgold, Georgia. Don't miss country music sensation Ronnie McDowell. Older women are beautiful lovers. Ronnie McDowell with special guest Cole Sitzler performing at the Colonnade Theater in Ringgold, Georgia, Thursday, April thirteenth at seven thirty p.m. Only five minutes from Chattanooga. Come hear all of Ronnie's great hits. I got wonder and I. You won't want to miss country music sensation Ronnie McDowell with special guest, local favorite Cole Sitzler. Performing at the Colonnade Theater in Ringgold, Georgia, Thursday, April 13th at 7.30 p.m. Watching girls go by. Tickets on sale now at the Colonnade Box Office, 706-935-9000. That's 706-935-9000. Or online at colonnadecenter.org. Don't miss Ronnie McDowell. You're going to ruin my... 
At Kays, we're a lot more than just a weight loss clinic. We offer sports physicals for only $18. DOT physicals and screenings are only $75. We serve individuals and companies by offering discount lab services through LabCorp, pre-employment, and random on-site drug screenings. Or if you're an individual who needs blood work but can't afford the high prices, we will do a complete metabolic panel for only $45. Find out about all of our services online at KaysDietClinic.com or call 657-2800. Hey, enjoy the spring savings now at Case Ace Hardware all month long. April Red Hot Buys include miracle Grow Moisture Control Potting Mix, a two-cubic foot bag, just $9.99. miracle Grow Garden Soil, one and a half cubic feet, only $5.99. And Scott's Colored Mulch, only $3.99 a bag with your Ace Rewards card. Don't miss the Red Hot Buys, the big April savings at Case Ace Hardware. Locally owned and operated at 11665 South Main Street in Trenton. Case is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Welcome back to Reading and Writing Arithmetic. If you're just now joining us, we are with Dade Elementary School this week, and we've been talking to some of the contestants that did the oratorical contest. And uh, just a little bit ago, we heard from three fourth graders, and so now we're going to listen to these two fifth graders, and we're gonna to listen to their speeches. And then if we have time when we come back, we're gonna get some test-taking tips from some of the kids. So, All right, uh, introduce yourselves, and then go ahead. Who wants to go first? Okay. I'm Drew Sharp, and I'm in Miss Knox's fifth grade class. Okay. So go ahead and read your speech. What the world gains from optimism. Imagine a country with no support in its people, its government, or its military. Where racism is a thing, this country needs a good dose of optimism, wouldn't you think? Turn on your... On the side. Sorry. Technical difficulties. Live TV. Is it? Is the light on? Okay, there's a button right there. Push it. Yep. Try it now. Is the light on? No. There, Blow into it. it. Blow into it. His hand is Is it not? Okay, yeah, we got three. Uh, you turn it on. Okay. okay. All right, there you go. Okay. Just kind of put it on the chair. There you go. All right, sorry. We'll try it one more time. Start, you can start over since we haven't gone very far. What the world gains from optimism. Imagine a country with no support in its people, its government, nor its military, where racism is a thing. This country needs a good dose of optimism, wouldn't you think? This was our country in the 1970s. Civil rights movements were happening and the Vietnam War was going on. And Americans did not support the U.S. involvement in Vietnam. Another huge issue is that the civil rights advocate Martin Luther King Jr. was shot and killed in his Memphis hotel. This was another reason our country needed a good dose of optimism. Then came 9-11, when there were attacks on the Twin Towers in New York City. Also the day the U.S. declared war on terrorism, and our country finally had full support in its decision. This is a clear example of what a country can do with and gain from optimism. Hopefully, we will not be in this position again, but if we are, we will hope make a great improvement like this in the future. In some countries this is every day and it's not getting better. For some countries such as Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Syria, and Israel it is much worse. These countries are using the same thinking and tactics they have always used. Albert Einstein once said we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. And I agree, to me, it sounds like it would make it 10 times worse. Imagine, if you keep hitting yourself over and over again, you would get nowhere. Look back in history. Did Washington give up to the British? Did Agamemnon give up to the Trojans? Did Grant give up to Lee? Did Stonewall Jackson give up to James Longstreet? Oh, did Lincoln give up to Davis? Do you see what I'm trying to tell you? The best examples of optimism are in our history books and were carried out by our ancestors. And if we don't use that courage, that bravery, and that optimism that was passed down to us, then what examples are we showing our descendants and the future generations of our country and our world? I'm even showing examples of optimism in my class at Dade Elementary School. I've showed my peers a 
a working Lego Coke machine and a working earthquake simulator. And to tell the truth, those projects aren't just to, aren't just for grades, but to show them optimism and to give them an inspiration. As you can see, I believe the best examples of optimism are in our history books, our ancestors, us, and hopefully our descendants. Thank you, and remember, show examples of optimism. Very good. Do you like history? Is that what made you write about it? Mm -hmm. That was very good. Very, very good. Okay, so introduce yourself. I'm Jasmine Yorston. I'm in Miss York's fifth grade classroom. All right, so go ahead. With optimism, inventors like, wait, on the wrong page. It's yeah. alright. I don't know where my first page is. She's missing the first page. Oopsies. Yay, saved by mom. Thank you, mom. What the world gains from optimism. Optimism means hopefulness and confidence about the future or a successful outcome of something. Optimism is important in every aspect of our lives. As human beings, we always want to think and wish for the best things in life. It's our nature to always see the brightest future in most successful lives. Without optimism, though, the world would always be negative. The opposite of optimistic is pessimistic. So imagine if everyone were pessimistic instead. Could you imagine if everyone wished for a bad day instead of a good day? Or if we went around only looking down on people negatively instead of looking up to them positively? With optimism, inventors like Alexander Graham Bell were able to change the world with just an idea. He invented the telephone. Other inventors like Thomas Alva Edison were so optimistic that he wanted to turn darkness into light. So he invented the light bulb. Optimism definitely helped these men and other inventors change the world in many ways. Parents are optimistic. They, they will raise their chi children into good adults with positive and productive lives. These children will one day, that their children will one day be very successful and that all their dreams come true. They aren't taught how to raise children, but they stay hopeful that they are raising them right. Doctors go to work every day optimistic that they will be able to save or change lives. They deal with babies, children, and elderly, who are usually sick and in the worst part of their life. They stay confident in their training and their medicine and always try to make everyone better. They also stay optimistic with the families. Firefighters are another great example on how optimism helps the world. They run into burning houses when everyone else is running away from them. They have faith in their skills and teamwork that together they will put out the fire. Optimism is what gives them the confidence to keep saving lives. Our men and women in uniform, police, army, and military, save the world every day using optimism. They protect and serve their country. They show stress when we show weakness. They show strength when we show weakness. And they fight so we don't have to. They are so optimistic about our country that they are willing to die for our future to be a better and safer place. Of all people, teachers are probably the most optimistic. They spend their whole lives teaching and being positive role models for their students. They are optimistic that students will have a better life if they are educated. They also teach optimism by encouraging their students to never give up and to always try again. They are optimistic that their knowledge and history will always be passed down to another generation. All of these people are optimistic in so many different ways. They all inspire others to be optimistic too. If they were pessimistic instead, the world would be full of chaos. Crime, theft, illness, and fear would take over the world. Meaning, doctors wouldn't heal people, firefighters would start fires, teachers would teach false information, and there would be no technology invented. Being optimistic helps the world in so many ways. So let's change the world and be optimistic today. Very good, you guys were very, very good. So, all right, so now we've heard from the fifth graders. Those were really amazing and definitely we could learn something about being optimistic. So, all of us, I think, at some point. All right, we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back on Reading, Writing, Arithmetic.
At Kay's Diet Clinic, our goal is to get you healthy inside and out. We offer non-stimulant appetite control medications, 100% all-natural, safe and effective, and all while under a doctor's care. We offer prescription appetite suppressants, B12 and lipotrophic injections, along with natural weight loss products and nutrition counseling. Family-owned and operated, Kay's Diet Clinic, 5008 Highway 136 West Trenton. Call 657-2800. Walk-ins welcome. Kay's Diet Clinic, behind the Huddle House, online at kaysdietclinic.com. Don't miss country music sensation Ronnie McDowell with special guest Cole Sitzler at the Colonnade. You're gonna ruin my bad reputation. Thursday, April 13th, 7.30 p.m. at the Colonnade Theater in Ringgold. Only five minutes from Chattanooga. Tickets on sale now at the Colonnade box office. Call 706-935-9000 or online at colonnadecenter.org. Ronnie McDowell, Thursday, April 13th at the Colonnade Theater in Ringgold. Only five minutes from Chattanooga. Delivering top quality health care locally. We are Northeast Alabama Health Services. With seven locations, there's one near you. Scottsboro Section, North Sand Mountain, in Higdon, Skyline, Woodville, Fife, and Fort Payne. National Doctors' Day is March 30th, and we would like to recognize our doctors and let them know how much we appreciate them. Dr. Teresa Bayston at North Sand Mountain Health Care Center, Dr. Susan Copley at the Scottsboro Health Center, and Dr. Charles Giddens at the Section Health Center. Putting your health concerns first, we're Northeast Alabama Health Services. It's time to stock up on Uncle Lars Outpost Complete Meals with dozens of choices. Try our gluten-free barbecue chicken and rice or our hearty turkey stew or choose our chuck wagon stew with long grain rice. All of our meals are ready to feed your entire family with no modified ingredients, no colors, no MSG, no dyes, and no preservatives. Also try our snacks and popcorn along with our flavored waters. Visit our two locations in Trenton, 12270 South Main and Side Peddlers on Main at Highway 136 West and Side Cabins to Castles or buy online at UncleLarsOutpost.com. All right, welcome back to Reading and Writing Arithmetic. So we have Data Elementary School with us, if you're just now joining us, and we're getting ready to hear some really cool student tips for test taking and then parent tips for test taking. All right, go guys. Strategy number one, read through the entire problem, including the answer choices. Make sure you understand what the problem is about. Strategy number two, ask yourself, what is the question asking me? Underline the key words that help you understand what the question is asking. Strategy three, analyze the answer choices and eliminate any answer choices you can. Strategy four, choose the best answer after you have narrowed down your choices. Strategy five, go back and review the questions you, have, you just answered. Does your answer choice make sense? All right, so those were the student tips. Good job. Did you guys help write them? No. No. All right, well, that's all right. Uh, Ms. Blevins wrote them. All right, good job, Ms. Blevins. All right, now we're going to go to parent tips. All right, so these are parent tips to help us get through testing. Strategy number one, provide a nutritious breakfast for your child or arrive early enough to eat at school. Avoid eating a high-sugar breakfast and try to incorporate more protein during testing days. Strategy number two, go to bed early and give yourself a little extra time in the morning. Extra stress can have negative effects on test performance. Strategy three, remind your child this is a time to show what they know. Strategy four, schedule any doctor's appointments for non-testing days. A testing calendar can be found on the DES website under the calendar tab. Strategy five, Dress your child comfortably so they can focus on the test and doing their best. Very good. We got the, the, how many of you guys follow most of those testing tips? Most of you? That's good. Then I've got, I've got uh, ad administrators and stuff out there saying we do too. It's a good idea. It is a good idea. All right, so let's go through real quick and say your names one more time so everybody knows who you are and then it's about time that we say goodbye because we got about one minute. So who wants to go first? I'm Drew Sharp, and I'm in Miss Knox's fifth grade class. I'm Jasmine Yorston. I'm in Mr. York's fifth grade class. I'm Cohen Blevins, and I'm in Miss Rose's fourth grade class. I'm Jersey Crabtree, and I'm in Miss Rose's fourth grade class. I'm Allison Jenkins, and I'm in Miss Rose's fourth grade class. All right, guys. You ready to wave? All right. Bye.